Hi guys, <clears throat> it is a beautiful spring morning here in the collapse of everything here in Doomsday Trailer. Uh, it's lovely, it is a Monday morning, March 11th, 2024, so happy 13th anniversary to the Fukushima nuclear blast. Let's all start off this Good News Monday by wishing Fukushima, Japan a happy 13th birthday. <coughs> Many more to come, I assure you. Uh, so, the Good News Monday roundup, looking for good news in the collapse of a planet. Uh, I have brought out my team of bloodhounds, an electron microscope. Actually found three good news stories to brighten your Monday morning. Uh, and we're going to start talking about, we're going to start with the whales, about saving the whales. What is going on with whales in the Atlantic Ocean this week? <clears throat> First baby right whale <clears throat> of the season dies from injuries caused by ship collision. Uh, I think I have the wrong whale story. What do you think, guys? Uh, the very first, <clears throat> you know, critically endangered right whale. Uh, made it about a week before getting crushed to death by a cargo ship. I'm not sure that was the uh, the whale story I meant. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. <clears throat> uh, how about this one? Should not exist. Whale that disappeared from Atlantic hundreds of years ago, spotted off Massachusetts. You know, that is one old whale. This whale, uh, hundreds of years ago, this whale disappeared. And now he's back. Uh, <coughs> what is this all about? <coughs> A rare whale that has been extinct in the Atlantic Ocean for more than 200 years was spotted off the coast of Massachusetts, the New England Aquarium announced last week. An aerial survey team confirmed the sighting of a gray whale, frequently just called the Pacific Gray Whale, in the Atlantic Ocean about 30 miles <clears throat> south of Nantucket on March 1st. <clears throat> Quote, I didn't want to say out loud what it was because it seemed crazy, said Orla O'Brien, an associate research scientist at the aquarium. Um, quote, my brain was trying to process what I was seeing <clears throat> because this animal was something that should not really exist in these waters, said research technician Kate Lemmy. We were laughing because of how wild and exciting this was to see an animal that disappeared from the Atlantic hundreds of years ago. Yeah, it just disappeared you know, like under a rain of harpoons. Uh, <clears throat> Gray whales are regularly found in the North Pacific Ocean. The species disappeared from the Atlantic Ocean by the 18th century, but in the last 15 years, there have actually been five observations of gray whales in the Atlantic and Mediterranean waters, including one off the coast of Florida in December of 2023. 
and they say that is the same whale that they just saw again. <clears throat> Scientists point to climate change to explain the strange sightings, noting that the whale may have traveled through the once again ice-free Northwest Passage, which connects the Atlantic and Pacific through the Arctic Ocean in Canada. Uh, the Northwest Passage has been free of ice in the summertime in recent years due to rising global temperatures, allowing gray whales to travel through it, <clears throat> a feat that would not have been possible in the previous century. Yes. Uh, there you go. These sightings of gray whales in the Atlantic Ocean serve as a reminder of how quickly marine species respond to climate change, given the chance. There you go. So we have some good news about the ice-free Arctic. I guess they're saying uh, this quote, blue ocean event, whatever word, however you want to describe it, now, uh, more and more good news for gray whales saying that uh, this mythical blue ocean event, we should see it in the next 10 years. So, uh, good news for the gray whales. I don't know, maybe some sea otters will, will swim over. Uh, we, we can get all sorts of good news as... You know, that pesky ice starts to melt. You know, that ice uh, is just blocking all of this movement uh, of all of these uh, animals that humans have obliterated off the face of the planet. So, if we can just melt that damn ice, we can, you, you know, uh, the, these marine... Uh, animals will uh, quickly respond and start mixing things up. And pretty soon, you know, we can have uh, banana trees growing in Alaska. Uh, so, you, you know, we lose a few, you know, I've, I've had this rant before. We, we, we lose a few polar bears up north and a few penguins down south. But uh, just when we get rid of this pesky ice in, in, in the way, it is good news there's going to be a hell of a lot more species, uh, both the Arctic and the Antarctic. Uh, the, the fossil record is clear. Book Hermit will explain this to you. If you don't want to listen to me, listen to Book Hermit. If you want biodiversity increasing on this planet, you simply melt the poles. Get rid of these polar ice caps and you will see uh, all sorts of animals and plants and everything responding to this. And, uh, you, you know, Antarctica uh, will become the new Amazon rainforest. This is good news right here in the mainstream media. Hallelujah! Get rid of those damn ice caps. All these doomers complaining about melting ice caps. But, uh, speaking of, uh, of all of these melting ice caps now, not sure what this is going to mean for the new woolly mammoths that they are uh, getting ready to breed, and I've been cheering on the, you know, the, the mad scientists bringing back the woolly mammoth, the passenger pigeon, uh, the Tasmanian tiger, uh, all of these things, but we have some good news on the mad scientist front. 
elephant stem cells created in a lab for the very first time could help bring back the mammoth. And I was, uh, you know, this is one that where I had to decide, do I put this in the good news roundup or the ain't gonna happen roundup? Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be one or the other. Uh, we shall see. But uh, if this is going to happen, this is how it's going to happen. Um, let's see. Back to the future. An ambitious plan to genetically engineer a woolly mammoth, a giant that has not roamed Earth in 4,000 years, has taken yet another step toward reality. I'm not making up the name of this place. <clears throat> Colossal Biosciences. Colossal Biosciences, a Dallas-based company aiming to create a mammoth hybrid that looks exactly like its extinct counterpart has reprogrammed stem cells from an Asian elephant. The species is the closest living relative to the woolly mammoth. The now modified cells could eventually be used to help the hybrid mammoth grow a woolly coat and develop other traits needed to survive in the Arctic. The company believes that resurrecting the woolly mammoth could possibly help restore the vulnerable Arctic tundra, which is at risk as the world warms. So, uh, this, this story is, is weird on so many levels. I, 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 I don't think they're even talking about, uh, in, in, in this uh, chain of research, they're not talking about using the woolly mammoth, you know, the frozen woolly mammoth meat that uh, keeps getting uncovered up there in the temper frost or the perma mush or whatever you want to call it up there. Th this sounds like they're actually going to turn an Asian, you know, a naked Asian elephant into a woolly mammoth. Not sure how it's going to restore the Arctic tundra. Uh, we, w we will wait to see, but it sounds to me like it would be easier just to wait a couple of decades and just put Indian elephants in Alaska or Siberia. It sounds like Alaska or Siberia will be a great place to be an Indian elephant uh, eating the, uh, you know, the fresh bananas off the tree, but uh, good for the mad scientists. And, and all joking aside, uh, I hope, uh, I, I have no problem with it. You, you know, if humans are the ones who obliterated a species off of the planet, uh, I have no problem with humans bringing the species back. Uh, th this is, uh, I, I do not understand this moral ethical debate uh, uh, about bringing back a species that we made extinct. Uh, but we had a, so we're going to wind up, uh, I had a similar story to this, I think, last week. <clears throat> The electric vehicle slowdown has already hit Tesla, Rivian, and others 
and these stocks are also casualties. All right, the fallout from a slowdown in EV demand continues to spread beyond just the makers of electric vehicles. One group that has seen double-digit declines in the past 12 months is charging networks stocks. Shares of network operator Blink are down roughly 64% over the past year, while charging hardware and software maker ChargePoint is 81% percent down during the same period. Network owner and operator EVGO's stock is down 55 percent in the past year. All are trading below their consensus target prices. Um, this is Brett Castelli, Equity Analyst at Morningstar, uh, whoever that is, quote, similar to the EV space as a whole, particularly in the last half of 2023, you saw the space come under pressure from a stock price perspective EV charging has had a similar performance going down the toilet as more and more people pull their head out of their ass and uh, understand uh, that these electric vehicles are a joke. They are one of the kings of the bright green lies. Uh, spreading around this planet uh, like a bad case of gonorrhea. Uh, the electric vehicles uh, the, the <laughs> acting like these fucking electric vehicles are, are, are going to save this planet. Uh, we're gonna have woolly mammoths uh, eating bananas in Alaska uh, before electric vehicles are, are, are going to save the planet. Uh, in with the new boss, same as the old boss. But anyway, uh, I got to wrap this up because the little dog needs to go to the doctor to get his annual heartworm check. You want to go to the doctor to, to get your heartworm check. Anyway, get out there, uh, get out there and, uh, I don't know, get out there and do what? You know what to do. My guys.